All right. So this is it. Uh, review and then later today, study set 13 and your worksheet 13. So um, I think everyone, there's one person who owes me their peer reviews, actually two people. So you probably know who you are. Uh, QA Labs, so QA2 is due today. Um, so have fun with your flow chart and the post lab questions. And um, for those of you here now, I do stay after class if you have questions or five o'clock, I have an office hour. And then I'll also stay after um, I go through the study set, which should only take a half hour until like seven o'clock. So if you have questions on that lab, um, it just has more steps, but you know how to do the flow charts now. So I think you'll be okay. A couple of people have already done it. And uh, I mentioned this the other day, uh, at the beginning, before you have a split, you're gonna have two steps. Um, that first step, step one is actually really important, which is that fixing the pH to just the right pH. Um, so that deserves its own arrow and step and a word or two. Um, adjusting pH to the 0.5, because uh, if you don't, it gets a post-lab question because it's such an important step, because if you do that step wrong, the lab doesn't work, and then you have to start over. Um, the BS reflections, so again, you watch the video, you watch it in double time, so it will take 15 minutes, and then you just write about either your own belief system related to chemistry um, or two things I touch on. Um, and then I will open the folder for if you've been doing the 30 days of uh, your diet or meditation um, that you can submit tomorrow because tomorrow is our big day for celebration three. And it is, we don't have a final celebration in here. Um, so thermodynamics and oxidation reduction. You, you can thank last year's class for that. So you can all send gratitude to them for, for having such low integrity that I could not put my heart through that again. So, um, and so with that, I wanna start by saying thank you to all of you for having uh, what appears to be integrity, which is really nice. Um, and especially those who've been with me for three terms online for keeping high integrity. Um, all right, so it's same like the other two, uh, just come to Zoom. So we'll be at 1 p.m. or 6 p.m. and I'll be on the hour before each. So if, and and I did offer, um, so this is on Thursday, if you feel you need to do it on Friday because of work and other stuff and you just wanna catch up, um, yeah. Otherwise, you guys are almost done. We're there, we're within that like 20, four hour window. All right. Um, so there are a couple things to point out. Showing your work, showing it like, right? This, you guys are getting away with everything online. So you're gonna show your work very clearly and simple explanations up here. Um, so for A, which one would we pick and why? C3H8. C3H8, why? There's more bonds, so more disorder. Yeah, so the higher number of bonds gives you higher complexity. Um, and so bonds have a vibration and stuff. So uh, as our molecules get larger and larger, the state of matter is important. So we do want to make sure that they're both a gas. All right, on the next one, which one and why? Uh, higher temperature. Yeah, so this one, it's zero, zero Celsius. Degrees. Yeah, uh, so higher temperature, higher temperature, what? More uh, kinetic energy, so more chaos. Or giggles yeah, so and more, more kinetic energy, more giggles and jiggles and wiggles, uh, however you want to word it. I'm hoping you guys will answer for Dave Faust in a month like that, because connect energy is usually one of the first topics in physics. Uh, the next one, so these are predictions. And so, anybody? The aqueous, the aqueous one. 
Yeah, why? Um, <clears throat> because it um, has more energy than a solid. Well, in terms of entropy, in terms of disorder. It has, uh, <laughs> it has um, more disorder. Do you know why? Um, it's not crystalline. You know, that, that, that's an interesting way to put it, Sumner. Um, so crystalline means that it's just sitting there, right? And so there is that this has, is going to have ions moving. Um, and so that term movement is the idea of the jiggles and giggles. So it has more movement or more jiggles going on. So the ions are meandering, moving jiggling about. Uh, the other way to answer is you also, it's a mix. So whenever you have a mixture, you're going to have more complexity because there's more things in there. Um, instead of having a solid, which is a pure substance. Um, so, or the solid is crystalline. So solids are just sitting there in a crystalline structure. So uh, crystalline structures are always our lowest entropy. Um, all right, the next one. Anyone have an idea? H2S? It is. Why? The sulfur is larger, bigger? No. No. It has to do with its weaker intermolecular forces which means you have more movement or more giggles. Basically, they all end up with more giggles and jiggles. So the IMFs are the intermolecular forces that are holding things together. And it is H2O has those H bonds that makes everything really special. So a lot of you are moving into organic chemistry or nutrition or something and H bonds um, in biochemistry is a big deal because that's what holds our proteins together. Um, holds our DNA together, the double helix, um, and H2S would just be a dipole, and so it'd be weaker. All right, on the next one, which pressure are we going to pick, and why? One atm. The, the lower pressure. So a lower pressure because. Uh, lower pressure means more volume, which means more space for the particles to move around, which in turn mean, leads to greater entropy. Yeah, so for everything we've been talking about, pressure and volume um, have that gas law relationship of inverse, an inverse relationship. So when one goes up, the other goes down. Temperature is a separate uh, variable, but a low pressure indicates that we would have a larger volume, so there's more space to move around. So more space to giggle. All right. So phosphine, fascinating, because uh, they use this for a lot of stuff, and it's extremely toxic. So a um, couple things. Well, I'm going to pause us. I'm going to give you guys five minutes. So see what you can do with this. And... Right. So... State your formula. This is the full formula, or you can just say products minus reactants. Um, so that's what I mean by, so at least say products minus reactants. Uh, so you'll be given a little chart like this on the celebration, so you don't need to worry about that big chart of numbers. On this one for delta H, because we're forming it from re, um, elements, so elements Delta H formation and delta G of formations are going to be zero. So we're just going to have four moles of pH3 times the 23 kilojoules per mole. And that gives us the 92. Uh, you don't have to show the positive, but I'll emphasize that's positive. So this means it's endo. And we do for the delta H, for the delta S. Uh, everything has an entropy, so we'd have the four moles of pH3. Um, so please keep labeling. And if you haven't been or I've said, please show units, this is what I mean. So just 
being precise in showing your units because the units are important. Um, the moles will cancel, so we'll be left with our joules per Kelvin. Uh, and then we're minus, we have to put this all in a bracket, our one mole of P4. So phosphorus as an element is actually a tetratomic. Um, it actually has a couple different allotropes. All right, 41 joules per mole K and our six moles of hydrogen. And so please, so if, if you didn't get full credit on a worksheet and it says, please label, show your work more carefully, this is what I'm talking about. Um, so I, I do give you more space. Um, it's, it's five pages on the exam. Um, and then our last step would be that delta G equals delta H minus T delta S. And uh, so delta G will equal the 92 kilojoules. Temperature is 298 Kelvin. Again, that's just what it is. It's considered 25. And you do have to be careful to change your joules to kilojoules. So this would be 0 0.013 kilojoules per Kelvin. And we want to be careful with the sign. Um, yeah. And we'll end up with that number. So the delta H tells us it's endo. Uh, the delta S positive tells us we're increasing disorder, which makes sense because we had a solid and we end up with only gas. So we lose the solid. Um, but our delta G is reactant favored because our delta G is positive. And all right, so we're going the wrong way at standard temperature. So when it asks about temperature and pressure, this is going back to Le Chatelier's principle. And so if it's endo, what kind of temperature do we want? Oh, I gave the answer, high temperature. Because endothermic means heat's on the reactant side. So a high temperature will shift it forward because it's endo, um, right? So heat is on the reactant side. Exos like cold temperatures. All right. And for pressure, we look at um, the high pressure. We'll move it to the side. Uh, high pressure means a low volume. So it's going to shift it forward to the side with fewer moles of gas. So we had six moles versus four moles. So that's why it's a high temperature, high pressure. That was a question from your first celebration. I think it may have been on the second one too. Uh, calculating the temperature, just simply taking your delta H divided by your delta S. So you'll again get three hours. Um, I it, it shouldn't take you three hours. And but that way you can precisely show your work carefully um, with units. So the 92 kilojoules and the 13 or sorry, 0 0.013 kilojoules per Kelvin. Um, so they have to have the same sign for us to do this. If they don't have the same sign, that would mean it's an always or a never. But when we get the answer, 7,077-ish K, um, if you give me that answer, you're not gonna get full credit because it's never one temperature. That's the temperature at where it changes. Um, that it was spontaneous or it was non-spontaneous. So since it's endo, we just said high temperatures. So it's going to be um, and higher. You can use the greater than sign, so temperatures above this. But some of you have commented you have trouble with the alligator eating which way, what is it eating, the 7,000 or the T? So write the word instead. So 7,077 Kelvin and higher. All right, calculating K, we just have another formula. Uh, so delta G equals negative RT natural log of K. And so our delta G, which was the 88 kilojoules. Um, you can just write negative RT, but then if your answer is wrong, I won't know why. Um, 
that just kind of depends. So a reminder, so 8.314 e to the negative three, because we're in kilojoules. Uh, so that is kilojoules per mole K and then times the 298. So we're assuming that temperature unless you're told otherwise. You won't want to use this temperature because your answer would just come out as a, as a one actually. Uh, and so E to the power of that. And we should get this number. A reminder, if for some reason you hit overflow, that's why I will be on Zoom to answer those kind of questions. Uh, then you would at least simplify it to say e to the power of negative 35.5, which you should not hit overflow if I'm not hitting it. But you want to at least simplify it. But most of your calculators, I mean, all of your calculators should be able to do that. Uh, when I ask if it makes sense, you're just putting that our delta G is positive, which is non-spontaneous. And just be careful how you word your K. K is not positive or negative. K is always compared to one. So our K is less than one, which means reactant favored. Again, from that very first lecture. And if you think back, it's like, oh my gosh, this goes so fast that you probably have that down. That's probably like the one thing that will stick with you that K, I mean, if you ever hear it again, you'll be like, oh yeah, K greater than one or less than one. It's just a ratio. Um, any questions with this first page? Go back, I mean, this is good to go back and do practice. And yeah, you've all invested a lot of time. So just 24 hours. Um, all right. So do you want me to pause again, give you guys like 10 minutes to play with this page? All right, so if you're listening at home, just pause. So um, again, practice going back over his study sets. Do your study set today and then come at six o'clock as I go through it so you can make sure you've got the oxidation reduction down and do your, do your worksheets, get it all in. Um, and you guys want to be done. All right. So this is the Hess's law that we all love so much. And this is the equation that we're solving for, because it's the one that we don't know delta G, so we can't touch that equation. Um, in this equation, my first one, I my sulfur's on the wrong side, so I'm going to have to flip the equation. And it will say that you must show how it cancels out. So again, most of you show this, probably everybody who's here right now um, and who's going to be listening to this. So I'm like talking, preaching to the choir. But um, in case somebody keeps losing points because I keep saying you're not showing me how things cancel out, uh, you have to actually flip your equation, which means you change the sign to a negative uh, 300. And we need to double it because I want two sulfurs on my reactant side. So I double everything, including my delta G. All right, my other equation is okay. I want the two SO3s. So I, I, I'm a mom, so you learn how to ignore things, I think, and or as you get older. I ignore the oxygen because oxygens are always all over the place. And the two SO2s are going to cancel out, and my oxygens will add up to the three oxygens there. My two sulfurs are on the reactant side, and my two SO3s are on the product side. And then you just add together. So we'd have negative 600, negative 140. So negative 740 kilojoules. So for those of you who've always been like, oh, I struggled with these, hopefully you're finding them. Oh, they're not that bad. Um, all right. So oh, this is for Devin in case he has oily stains from his coconut extraction, um, which was a really awesome demo. So there's our equation, and I gave you some delta Gs of formation. So my CO2 is negative 394. 
I'm just going to write them underneath so I can see what's going on. My SO2 is negative 300, and these are kilojoules per mole. Uh, and what I'm saying here is the free energy change for the reaction. So the delta G of the reaction is negative 1,059 kilojoules. Um, and we're trying to find the CS2. So this is my X. I don't have a number for oxygen. So is this where you start going, oh, geez, you told me not to worry about it or go find your chart. Or you say, oh, it's an element. Elements get to be zeros. Uh, as long as it's oxygen as O2 and not ozone O3, O3 would definitely have a number. All right, so you're gonna state that your delta G of your reaction equals, you can say it how I did on the previous one with the delta H. You can write, have fun writing your little symbols, uh, but you at least wanna say delta G of the reaction is gonna be the sum of the products minus the reactants. And then we wanna label our pieces. So the delta G of the reaction um, is, our answer, uh, not to the question, but it is that side. My products, you want to label, you have one mole of CO2 times it's negative 394. Um, and then our two moles of SO2 times it's negative 300. So I suppose one of the things I would tell well, I guess I don't know. Um, and then we would say minus X. So that's what my CS2 is. Now, if I had two uh, CS2s, then I would have to have this as minus 2X. And the algebra, um, when you find the sum of all of that, what do we have? This, this whole piece is going to be negative 994 kilojoules minus X. So just, you don't have to show this step, but more, um, this is a question on the worksheet. A couple of people had trouble with it. This is a separate term. So you're going to actually add the 994 kilojoules to the other side. And then that equals negative X. So once you do that, um, because this is a negative, that's why we added it. Uh, then you would have to change it, change the sign. So the answer should be 65. The unit should technically be 65 kilojoules per mole. So delta G's are per one mole of the compound. Uh, any questions? All right. Uh, and now we're going to write reactions. So vaporization, water. Uh, it just means we're taking a liquid going to gas. That's it. That's all it means. So a change in state, pretty simple. Uh, to vaporize water, you have to add heat. So that would be endo or a positive delta H. I guess I asked for signs, so positive. Um, and as far as S, we're moving towards a gas, so that would be a positive delta S or an increase in disorder. Um, so whichever way I'm asking for. And then when is it spontaneous? So this is the temperature thing. Uh, so if they're both positive signs, then it's high temperature. Or you can do the happy frowny phase that this is, the endo is a frowny phase, the entropy disorder. Combustions, uh, propane is C3H8, it's a gas. And oxygen, we'll end up with three CO2 gas, four H2O gas. If you go to H2O as a liquid, that will change our answers and I'll talk about that. So I do look to see if you have that. And I think this is a five because we have six plus four. So five oxygen. Um, Combustions, always exothermic. So negative delta H 
And if you go with everything as a gas, your, your products, um, then you will be have a positive delta S. And so this is the time when you get the two happies. And so this is all temperatures. If you went with H2 as a liquid, your answer would be low temperatures. And that makes sense. Because for H2O to then condense the liquid, you would have to have a temperature below 100 degrees so that it was no longer a gas. Ponder that. All right, so the next one, calcium chloride dissolves. And this is saying that you're starting, dissolving means you're making it aqueous. So this goes back to the question on the first page. It's just we're writing it out. So you can show it like that, just going from a solid to aqueous, or you could show it as calcium ions plus two chloride ions. The advantage of showing it that way is it really shows that we would predict a positive delta S, that we're seeing ions now as opposed to a crystalline solid. Um, so our prediction would be for positive. It tells us the temperature decreases, so it's getting colder. So is that exo or endo? Well, exo releases heat. So exo would get warmer. So this is endo. This is a positive again. Um, so temperature decreasing is saying it's absorbing heat from you. Um, you know, this is not worded well. But um, the surroundings would be the water, and that is what you're measuring the temperature of. So the temperature, the water is losing heat to the equation. So that's endothermic. And so we're back to high temperatures. So again, if they both come out with a positive sign, um, then you're going with high temperatures. If they both come out with a negative sign, you're going with low temperatures. Uh, also a reminder, I think we run into this down here with these questions is these are the favorable conditions. So increasing disorder and exothermic. So if you have both favorable conditions, you get the always. Um, and then heat of formation. So calcium carbonate is our compound. Um, so carbonate is CO3. Um, yeah. Uh, and we're forming it not from ions here. We are forming it from the elements. So calcium carbon is actually carbon as graphite and oxygen. So the heat of formation means that you're ending up with one mole of the compound. And we're making it from the elements, not from ions, but from the elements. And so there's our equation. Uh, so you can see we have more stuff on the reactant side. So this is definitely a negative delta S. Um, we're also ending up at a solid. We had a gas over here. So we had a bunch of stuff coming together. It's a decrease in entropy. Um, and it tells you that the heat of formation is negative, so it's telling you it's exothermic. So if, sorry, if they both come out as a negative sign, so you have exo in a decrease in disorder, that would mean we have low temperatures is when it's gonna be spontaneous. Um, let's keep going. So, Um, it's always asking about spontaneous. And it's been a discussion I've had with a couple of different people in office hours. So spontaneous, again, has nothing to do with how fast or how much. It's just a yes, no, really. Um, so spontaneous has nothing, to, doesn't mean that you release heat. That would be exothermic. So A is incorrect. Um, B... It is nothing to do with rate. Um, the rate forward is faster than the rate reverse. Uh, that 
So equilibrium, if we go all the way back to when we first did equilibrium, equilibrium is when the rates are equal, but um, spontaneity has nothing to do with how fast. So again, uh, radioactivity is actually a spontaneous, uh, unstable nuclei will de decay. Right. Apparently C, D, and E are the correct ones. So let's see why. Um, yeah, so C is actually what spontaneous means. So once you start it, so you have to give it the initial push. So the propane, um, once you light that propane tank, it's going to keep burning until there's no more propane or you turn off the tank, meaning you close the oxygen valve. But you have to strike it or push the little thing that ignites it. Um, on D, the equilibrium constant is greater than one. So again, spontaneous is negative delta G. So our K is greater than one. And the cell potential means E. Uh, and so E is greater than zero or positive. So of course, those go together. That's just this part here. So they're all meaning the same thing, which means product favored. Uh, entropy. So this is saying you have a negative delta S. Could be, but it doesn't have to be. That would depend on the temperature. So that's why F is not true. So enthalpy and entropy together allow us to determine free energy, spontaneity, um, not one of them by themselves. So the amount of chaos is not going to mean something is spontaneous. Uh, and again, instantly has to do with kinetics, which is not related to this. And the catalyst that is related to activation energy. So a uh, catalyst lowers the activation energy and makes it go faster. It has nothing to do with our um, spontaneity. I'm listening to the jet go by, but it's not one of the fighter jets. Any questions on thermodynamics? And again, please also go back over your study sets um, so you feel comfortable. We take the test. You should, if, and, and most of you have been. You've just been doing all of your study sets. Go back and do this again, and you're good to go. Get your lab in today. Get your worksheet and study set in today. And then you're done with me in 24 hours. All right, so. We're going to do it again. We're going to pause for like 10 minutes. You guys can play with this page or you can take a break or it will say five minutes maybe. Um, yeah. So you can try balancing or you can be like, no, I want to do the electrochemical. Um, so try something. All right, I'm back. And uh, let's go for it. The balancing. So it's really good for your meditation because you just have to breathe before you do it. So our two half reactions. Uh, so our compounds with the carbon uh, first. And then the silver one's pretty simple. So if you want, you can do that one. Uh, the side with the positive charge is going to get the electron. So we end up neutral on both sides um, since the side's neutral. So our other reaction, we have one carbon. Make sure your carbon's balanced. And then we balance oxygen next. So we need a water on our reactant side. So that gives me one plus one, so two oxygens. And then... That gives me four hydrogens. So I'll end up with two hydrogens on my product side. So almost always, and I think all the ones we've done so far, the hydrogens and waters have always been ending up on opposite sides. That's not always true. Um, sometimes in a basic one, you can actually end up with them on the same side. All right, now we have to do the electron. And this one's really not that bad because uh, nothing else had charges except the hydrogens. So since the hydrogens are positive, the electrons, electrons are almost always on the same side with the hydrogens, just because 
positive and negative. And this one, the hydrogens and electrons would be the same number because nothing else had a charge. All right, uh, we double. The ones in the notes were also really good practice to have. So just practice it. Once you have it down, they're, they're kind of relaxing because they're like a puzzle. So the electrons must cancel out. We do not include them. Uh, and nothing else will cancel because we only had water in one of our reactions. So we'll have the water. Um, and again, we traditionally show the water first or last. If it's on the reactant side, we show it first. And since um, the other ones, it doesn't matter the order you show them in. But you do want to show your charges because that's really important. Um, and our solid, I always leave out aqueous. I don't know why. Me, if it doesn't have a state in my brain, it's aqueous. All right, the charges, we have two positive here, two positive on the product side. If I count my oxygens, I have two and two. So that's a quick check instead of having to go through every single element. All right, so we're doing, and just be careful because it's really a 50-50 choice. By the way, in case you've been watching the videos, my little pictures on YouTube, it's not this one because the pictures don't have the bow. Uh, so the pictures on YouTube are Red's last journey with us. So it was nine years ago. And so one of my students 10 years ago in this class made Red. Um, so this is Red's girlfriend who lost the leg because I dropped her. Um, after class one night and it's horrible uh but she's still fine she's, we just haven't done the surgery to put the leg back on anyway i know exactly where red is he's at yosemite national park um and yeah it's just a 10 mile hike to go back and get him and i just haven't been there since then and the next day i wasn't going to do 10 miles to get him and 10 miles back out but um yeah all right uh, so what element is reduced? So reduced means um, gaining electron. electron. It's gaining electron. So what element is reduced? The AG. Silver. The silver, yes. So it's based, your half reaction should, if you have them right, uh, the AG is gaining electrons because the electrons are on the reactant side. So gaining electrons are on the reactant side. All right. So that would be the silver. It doesn't matter to me. It is an element that is changing. So please do make sure you answer my question. Um, it is technically in the reduced form on the product side. So for those of you who like all the details, um, as a solid, it has a zero oxidation state. So it's going from a plus to a zero. Uh, for the reducing agent, it's the one that causes reduction. So it's the opposite, which would be HCHO. All right. So now we have to do the other one. I have reactions. Um, so the arsenic and probably the most missed thing on this one is forgetting to first balance the arsenic. Uh, so if you have a mishap when you're taking the celebration and it doesn't work out, just walk away from it, do the rest of the page, do the next page, and then just get a new piece of paper, your favorite color, and put over it and you know, draw a picture and just start all over. And it's probably something like that because it's usually hard to go back and find what the mistake is. But that too has to be there because you need to have the two arsenics. Then we can deal with the oxygens. So I have three oxygens. And on this side, I have eight because that too doubles the whole arsenic acid. Um, so I need five H2Os. That gives me 10 hydrogens. I already have six, so I only need four more. Um, now we do the electrons, which really aren't bad because 
everything's neutral except for the hydrogens. So wherever the hydrogens are, there goes my electrons. This is my Leo. This one lost electrons. So that's not my answer here. But that is going to be my answer for my reducing agent. Because whatever's your Leo, whatever's losing electrons, it's allowing something else to gain it. All right, our other half reaction is the permanganate MnO4 um, going to the Mn plus two. All right, one manganese. So we need four waters. Um, another quick comment, usually, but it's not an always, the waters do end up on opposite sides in the half reactions if they both have water, um, but not always. There, there's a, there's been like one time, and I don't know if if we run into that equation or not today, uh, where the waters were on the same side. It just has to do with how the oxygens play out, um, or maybe how I balance. All right, that gives me eight hydrogens, and now the electrons. So we know we need the electrons on this side. How many? Four. Everybody should everybody should be holding up five whole hand. I think you all have five fingers. So there are five. Um, so this has a net plus two, just from the MN. And over here right now, I have a plus seven because I have eight plus and minus one. So Five is the difference there, and the electrons have to end up on different sides. So before we try to do anything else, we have to cancel the electrons out. Um, don't cancel anything else out until you get the electrons to balance. So you're going to multiply by five and multiply by four. Um, we should probably finish this question real quick. Uh, the element must be the MN. So it's almost never the oxygen unless we run into peroxide, which I think we do run into. No. Oh, on the study set, because I have a note to talk about it when we do the study set today. Um, so the manganese is the one that's changing. Here we go. This is worthy of the board. What's the oxidation number of the manganese? Here it's a plus two, but what does it start at? Plus seven. Yes, you've redeemed yourself, Damon, on that. Thank you for answering that. Um, yeah, it's a plus seven. Um, Paul, you had answered. You haven't been up there yet. All right, so different colors can be helpful. So we're going to multiply the top one by five. So 25, five, 10. Uh, five times four is 20 hydrogens and 20 electrons. And my second equation, I'm multiplying by four. So 20 electrons, 32 hydrogens, four is in front of the MNs, and four times four is 16 waters. All right. Now we're going to cross some stuff out. Um, so we're the electrons cross out. That has to happen before you can reduce the other stuff. Um, and there were a couple of people I wrote a note on their last worksheet. Um, it happened also in the study set on Monday. Um, so if you have waters on both sides, some of them reduce. So those 16 are going to reduce this to the number nine. So nine waters uh, and the hydrogens. So I have 20, and so those 20 are going to reduce this to 12 hydrogens. Now, you can pull it all down. The waters and hydrogens are going to end up on the same side for right now, uh, and then neutralize, or you can neutralize right now. Um, it doesn't matter. I'm going to do it right now, or else I'm going to run out of room. But we will need to add, for the hydrogens, we have to neutralize them. We're going to need 12 hydroxides on both sides to deal with the 12 um, hydrogens. So these 12 hydrogens and hydroxides are actually 12 waters, which will get added 
to the nine waters. It's 12 plus nine is 21. Yes. So you should end up with 21 waters. All right. Uh, five of the arsenic. Four of the MN, so the permanganate with its charge, you're going to end up with four MN with a plus two. Ten of the H3 ASO4s. All those guys crossed out. And 12. I just put a parenthesis around the OH only because I'm teaching and I don't want somebody to think I have 120 Hs. Um, so this one drives some students crazy because you get big numbers and they don't like the big numbers. It took me years to figure out what students and it is that they like when we have numbers like twos or threes are OK. But once we get above four, um, students start freaking out. All right, we're going to do the check. The charge is easy to check. I have a negative four because the water and that have no charge. And so I'll just write it over here. And on my product side, I have a positive eight because I have four times that. And then I have a negative 12. So positive eight minus 12. So my charge is good. Then we get to count all the oxygens. So you have, probably going to lose count 21. Five times three is 15. Uh, and then four times four is 16. So that's 12. That's crazy. There's 52 oxygens on the reactant side, and there's got to be on the product side. So this side's easier. We have 10 times 4, which is 40 oxygens. This is all figuring out my oxygens. And then here I have 12. So 40 plus 12 is indeed 52. And if your oxygens have balanced, uh, basic reactions tend to have lots of oxygens in them. Uh, there was an alternative definition of oxidation and reduction. Does anybody remember it? Was it which one you added the oxygen to? And yeah, which one so, yeah, oxidized, that's actually where the words came from. Oxidized means oxygen. So if we look our, this was our oxidation reaction, the one that loses electrons. Um, and so the oxidation, the arsenic actually is gaining oxygens. So two of them had three, and now one of them has four. So it's gaining oxygens. And reductions means you're reducing the number of oxygens. So the manganese lost all of its oxygens. It's pretty cool. Um, anyway, that's a fun definition. All right, electrochemical and electrolytic. We're going to do the, somebody tell me what's the difference between them? The cathode and the anode polarity? You have to be so, when I ask for that, you have to tell me what is different. Okay, so on the electrochemical one, the anode is negative and the cathode is positive. And then the, in, in the electrolytic one, the anode is positive and the cathode is negative. Here we go. Good to hear your voice again, Christian. <laughs> yeah, so the polarities change. Anybody else? What's another one? The electrochemical is spontaneous and the electrolytic is non-spontaneous. Yes, thank you. That's like the big difference, that one. Uh, electrochemical is, you can even say it more simply than that, that it's going to have a positive E, which means it's spontaneous. Um, so if you're like wanting to be as simple as possible, you can just say E is positive, but you don't want to tell me one is spontaneous and one is not. Please make sure you say the electrochemical is the one that's spontaneous or electrochemical has a positive E and the electrolytic uh, would have a negative E or is non-spontaneous. Uh, another way of saying that, so when I ask for two differences, if you say Electrochemical E is positive, electrochemical is spontaneous. You just repeated yourself. 
that's all the same thing. Spontaneous means product favored. So that's why they're all in the same color. Uh, Non-spontaneous means reactant favored. That's all one answer. There's actually one other big difference. Anybody? Is the electrochemical cell two parts and electric cell is one part? Yes. So the electrochemical always has two cells or you have to have it split. So either you draw two, um, so like the batteries we were drawing. And, right, so we have to show them as two separate ones with a bridge. So there's two cells with the ion bridge. And um, electrolytic is one cell. So there's no bridge because everything's mixed together. So there's no wall separating them. No bridge, no wall, no tunnel. Everything's in one container. Um, so they call it a cell. All right, so those were differences. Now we can talk about similarities. So what are similarities? Uh, for both cells, the electrons still flow towards the cathode through an uh, exterior circuit. So electrons flow to the cathode. Oh, there was actually one other difference. And it's another one. Along the same lines, the cathode is always reduction. That is what the cathode means, is reduction. It's gaining the electrons. The electrons flow there. So what's going to be happening at the anode? Something's always flowing to the anode. Oxidation. It is. It's oxidation. But... Um, Anions always flow to the anode. So if it's electrochemical, that would be across the bridge. If it's electrolytic, it's just naturally within the soup. The cations flow to the cathode. Um, sorry, I had another thing I was gonna mention about differences and now I can't remember. Oh, there was, there's one more. Did anybody else think of one more? It actually goes with the purple part, um, the non-spontaneous. And this is more because on your worksheet today, you have to draw a picture of it. And so Max, um, this is the one thing I didn't look on your picture to see if you did this. You must plug in. So on that electrolytic cell on your worksheet today, the very first question is you have to draw the electrolysis. Uh, you do have to have your wire has to be connected and plugged into the wall somewhere. So um, where this one's spontaneous. And so this is going to be the battery. It's, it's making its own. Um, and so again, this is your cell phone. Your, I don't know if you drive a Tesla. You wouldn't be here at a community college probably. But, um, and then you have to plug it in to get the bat battery recharged. All right. We're going to write the half reactions. And this is electrolysis. So we're running the electric current through there. Um, so you are starting with the ions. So in electrolysis, you start with the ions. And what are we gonna end up with? We're gonna end up with the elements. Um, it wasn't actually really noticeable for us on Zoom in 221 because um, we had smaller groups. But when we do it like with 20, 24 students doing class presentations, everybody keeps mentioning who found their element. And so Sir Humphrey Davies, there's like three guys who keep getting mentioned. Um, and it had to do with, a lot of it had to do with electricity. Um, or the discovery, like noble gases, all are Ramsey. All right, uh, this one, we're gaining electrons and we end up with copper solid and the chlorine, we will end up with the diatomic, the chlorine gas. Uh, so we would need to double that reaction. You don't 
actually need to balance the two half reactions because the electrons, I mean, everything's mixed together, so it just naturally does, but um, yeah. All right, we're gonna also label. So my copper, the cation is always the cathode. And that makes sense because it is gaining electrons. It is always reduction we talked about. And the anion is at the anode. So it goes with what we just talked about. But um, so you're always starting with the ions. You split the ionic compound into the ions and they go back to the elemental state. It's really bizarre because everything you learned was always to make the ions. When you go back to like your third week in 221 or whenever your first chemistry was, um, and that's the whole point that this had to be plugged in for them to be able to suddenly make it go the way it doesn't want to go. Um, so we had to force this reaction. All right. Any questions? Um, all right, uh, we're doing chromium and, right. If you wanna fly over the North Pole in your dreams, uh, 1.35 kilograms. Chromium is CR. And the question wants us to know how many days. All right, we're solving for days. It's really nice to put what unit. Uh, and so chromium, we need to be at grams. So a thousand grams or 10 to third grams per kilogram. And then chromium on our periodic table is 52 grams per mole of chromium. So there's chromium, or you can do 51.996 if you love the sig figs. Depending on the periodic table, some of you probably have six or seven sig figs. And then for every one mole of chromium, Right there, I'm telling you the charge of the chromium. So if I'm not giving you the compound, like up here, chlorine's a minus one, that's how I knew the copper was a plus two because there's two chlorines. That number, that is a Roman numeral three. That means you have three moles of electrons that we're trying to work with here. All right, and then we use Faraday's constant, uh, which is coulombs per mole of electron. So coulomb again is a charge. When you take physics, one of the first things you'll study is coulombs and you go, oh, it's just a unit of charge. All right, uh, amps is our other piece. Uh, so an amp 2.25, that's actually amp, AMP is an abbreviation for the full word. That is coulombs per second. So we have to flip it for the units to cancel. So you have a question similar to this. Well, I, I walk you through it. So it's really not that hard, but this is called factor label or dimensional analysis. So this is what I mean that you have to have it in this setup. So the kilograms, the grams, our moles cancel, our coulombs, we're at seconds. Um, and so 3,600 seconds to one day, I'm sorry, to one hour. That would be a really short day, maybe somewhere. Um, and then there are 24 hours in a day. So the electrolysis apparently keeps going on and on and on. This is a lot of chromium. And so it would take 39 days. Questions? All right. One more page. And just a reminder, if I ask you uh, how long does it take and to give your answer, uh, you get to seconds and then from there you would have had a huge number of seconds. So then you can go to hours and then see if you need to go beyond that. All right, let's go through this chart together. Um, so, this chart, I'm gonna give you a mini chart on your celebration also, just because that way you don't have to worry about finding charts and stuff like that. Um, so just, you need the parts that are in the chart. All of these reactions show plus electrons on the reactant side. 
So these are all reductions. Um, I'm sure somebody somewhere writes the chart the opposite way, but they're showing reduction half reactions. Which means if it's a reduction, these are your oxidizing agents. So whatever is reduced is an oxidizing agent. So they always switch for the agent. The agent, the strongest oxidizing agent is the one at the top. It is not gold, it is gold three. Gold means the solid, that would be the opposite of the oxidizing agent which is the reducing agent. So the strongest reducing agent is at the bottom of the chart. So the stronger the oxidizing agent, the weaker the reverse reaction, because these would all change signs. Um, so basically you're flipping the chart. All right, so which ones are capable of oxidizing the I negative? So it's basically which ones are, you can think of it this way, capable of flipping the iodine. So the I reaction. So to flip the reaction, you have to be above it. And on this chart, the only thing above it is the gold. But again, don't say gold, it is gold plus three. So what oxidizing agents? All right, and then last one. Anybody want to try for it? Can gold reduce tin ion to tin? No. And why? No. Why? Because if zinc is the strongest reducing agent, then gold is yeah. the weakest. What are we doing tin? Oh, the only one on here that could do that was zinc. So basically it's saying that we keep the tin. We're trying to keep go from tin plus two to tin solid with the gold. So we're gonna flip the gold, we're flipping the one that's above it. And so that's gonna make it not work. You always wanna flip the one that's below it. Um, now the exception to that is if you get an equation where I give you the reaction, like on number 12, whatever I give you, you have to go with it. So you can end up with a positive or a negative, but on number 11, where I give you the tin and the zinc, and I'm saying make it an electrochemical. Electrochemical means a battery, means spontaneous. Uh, we find our two reactions, so the tin and the zinc. And the, the one that's up on top, I'm gonna write them as my half reactions first. The higher one, you keep it how it is. You keep its cell potential, which is the 0.14. And then the lower one we flip. So we'll flip the zinc and you change the sign. Now, when I ask you to show me the overall reaction, I do want you to add these together. So you do need to make your electrons cancel out. If you double the equation, that does not change the value of E. The only thing that's going to change the value of E is flipping the equation. Again, that has to do with extensive and intensive properties. Um, you can read all day and night about those if you want. I'm sure, lots of people have great examples. So make sure you show your ion. This is important because, oh, this is important on the worksheet. So, Either today's, I know on the previous one you did, I can't remember today's. Our net E is, we add those two numbers up, I think it's 0 0.623. It's positive, which we want, because we need it to be spontaneous. All right. So looking at these, the anode means oxidation, which means losing. So that would be the looks like the zinc, right? Because the electrons are on the product side. So that's why it's nice to write the half reactions. So this is my Leo is the zinc reaction. So oxidized is the zinc. Um, cathode is positive because this is elect 
electrochemical and the electrons flow. So the electrons are flowing from the zinc to the tin. From the anode to the cathode, the tin is the cathode. The anions are gonna be the opposite of the electrons. So from the tin to the zinc. So basically this is in words, what you guys got to draw. So either you're gonna get to draw it or you get to write it out as words. Drawings are fun though. All right. So I'm gonna pause this. This one, actually, let me give you real quick, stating your formula. This is where you do E equals E naught minus 0 0.0257 over N. If you've been doing your work, you probably know these equations. And then instead of writing natural log of Q, let's write out products over reactants. So the zinc ion and the hydrogen gas. Um, the zinc solid we can ignore, and the hydrogen is in the denominator. So however I give you the reaction, that's how you solve for. Um, on the worksheet, I said blah, 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 and I said assume everything else is standard. So if I don't give you a number, you're just assuming the number you're plugging in is 1. The pH is how you solve for the hydrogen, right? 10 to negative pH. Uh, this is from the chart up at the top of the page. This is the chart up there, and that's what we're solving for. That's our question mark. And then also try this one. I'm going to pause this for a couple minutes, so you can go ahead and try it. Are any of you getting sentimental? I still get to record one more time. <laughs> um, all right, maybe you're getting like the champagne out going, oh my gosh, thank goodness. Um, you're going to miss Leo. And so, yes, I did dress up as Leo again, because why not? So you can dress up tomorrow. I really appreciate the people who dressed up yesterday. So much to choose from. Uh, so we're solving for E equals, so from the chart up there, the hydrogen half cells is zero in our chart. And so it's the zinc and the zinc is flipped. So this is a positive 0 0.763 volts. All right, uh, minus 0 0.0257. And that looks like two electron. And then we're gonna do natural log. Our zinc number is one, our hydrogen is 0 0.5. So the number on top is our 0 0.5. And on the bottom, the hydrogen is gonna be 10 to the negative 1.84. So my hydrogen is 10 to negative pH. You can find what that number is and you have to square it. Um, so Max, this is a question you asked me on the worksheet. On the notes yesterday, we had one like this, and you had to solve for the hydrogen because you had to solve for pH. And on the worksheet today, there's one like that. The only thing on the worksheet, you have to be careful because the equation is flipped. So the hydrogen ion will be on the product side, so it will be in the numerator. Um, but this one's easier because we know the pH. So we just plug in and we get an answer. And then we have to explain what's going on. So Although we changed the hydrogen gas a little bit, the big change is the pH. So what is standard pH? Zero. Yeah, so pH is the negative log of the hydrogen. And if standard, so standard means one molar. The negative log of one would mean the pH is zero. That would be standard. So we have a higher pH. So this is a question that like the whole term in one question, really this could be the one question on the whole thing. We have a higher pH. 
which means you have less hydronium. We're showing you as hydrogen ion to keep it simple with this. Um, otherwise, then we have lots of waters in there too. Um, and so that is a reactant. So you have to be careful is the hydrogen on the reactant side or product side. This one's on the reactant side. So if you lower reactant, you're gonna shift reverse. And a reverse shift means you decrease E. It did not decrease it all the way to make it non-spontaneous. We didn't completely move it to non-spontaneous, but we decreased the value of E. Um, so that's why it makes sense. Questions with that? All right, and then the next one, this is actually fun because I gave you K here and I'm saying it's fun because I think I did this on the one worksheet um, earlier this week and everybody was having trouble with it. It's actually easier if I give you, um, so Delta G will equal negative RT natural log of K. You just plug in the K value. So um, you can say negative RT. I'm gonna write my numbers out again. Uh, I always do it in kilojoules, 8.314 e to negative 3 kilojoules per mole K. Uh, those of you taking physics, you'll get to use that number. That's the R value we usually use in there. Uh, and then the natural log of 2.7 e to negative 19. So that's all you're doing. You're just plugging it straight in. Uh, you can change your delta G, just to review, you could either then, once you get your delta G, do delta G equals negative N F E. Um, let's do that for the fun of it. There, There is also another equation, and, and I wanna mention it. I did mention it the other day, and then some people used it. Uh, if you do it, this is a positive E not equals positive 0 0.0257 over n times the natural log of k. This is natural log of q, They're not the same thing because q is non-spontaneous. Um, you could do that to go straight from k to e. It should work either way. Um, either way, you need to know the number of electrons, so there must be two. So we have a negative. Whenever you're working with delta g, there's always a negative in there because delta g's are always the opposite sign of everything. So we have two electrons. Uh, you can write it as F. That is actually written as a funky, a fancy F for Faraday. Uh, so 9, 96,500 coulombs per electron. So my electron will cancel. Uh, and then E. We'll leave E there. And I'm going to set that equal to my delta G. So if you do this, you will not get my answer of negative. Even though I just spent like two minutes, you're like, oh my God, we're almost done. And now she's telling us she did it wrong. Why will you not get my answer if you do it this way? Because E will be uh, joules over Kelvin and not kilojoules. Yes. yes. E is joules. Uh, per coulomb. And I missed your name before, Peter. So you have to be careful to change your delta. If you use this equation, you have to make sure either to change your E to kilojoules, um, but E's are always in volts, so you would then have to change our kilojoules um, to joules and then rearrange, right? So our 106,000 joules divided by negative two divided by 96,000, and we get a negative E. And then to put it all together, really simply, our K was less than one, which means it's going backwards. It's reactant favored. So it should be really nice to see that your answers make sense, right? These this question should be like your most favorite question. You guys are gonna miss my worksheets, by the way. Just wanna say that, it's the last worksheet. I get lots of emails in the fall. It's usually not the first few weeks because you don't miss them in the first few weeks, but then 
it's like, you know, I missed all those study sets. I really didn't like having to do 13 study sets. I didn't like having to do a study set every day. I really miss doing a study set every day because, yeah, you're going to miss them. Um, so you get a positive delta G, a negative E. It all goes together. This all means it's non-spontaneous. It's a no-go. It means you have to keep pushing. So photosynthesis, the whole reason we're here is because photosynthesis happened on this planet. Photosynthesis was non-spontaneous. The sun is pushing it. So it doesn't mean it doesn't happen. It just means keep pushing. Um, and so that's it. Uh, so again, thank you, you guys. Um, Really, it's been, I mean, there's like eight of you who've been with me for three terms and three of you, Araceli and Damon and Christian, you've been with me since since the fires last year, a year ago when the fires happened. And yeah, which is really like me thinking back, I was thinking back today and I was just kind of giggling because 151 was a whole nother can of worms for me. Um, I had some integrity issues too. Um, but so anyway, all of you actually yesterday was so much fun. You all did like amazing on your presentations. Um, I really look forward to reading your papers and stuff. So thank you. Um, to your study set, to your worksheet, we're almost done. I will see you either later or tomorrow or soon. Goodbye. <laughs>